The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Everybody and welcome to the Happiness Jungle TV show with yours truly, your Chief Happiness Officer, Lindy Eldridge. I am delighted and excited to bring to you a gentleman that I met a year ago. Life has a funny way of bringing people into your life that have such amazing stories that inspire you that there should be nothing stopping you. This gentleman's name is David Kenneth Decker, and he is from Uganda, Africa, but he now resides in California. When you hear his story about how this gentleman built his life to where it is today and where he came from, the poverty, the poor, the unbelievable beginning, it is going to inspire and make you believe that everything is possible. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome David Kenneth Decada. Hey, David. Hi, Lindy. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you very much for such a powerful introduction. I'm glad I've been waiting for this moment to be on your live show. I've watched so many and you're so inspiring. Thank you for inviting me today. Oh, you're so kind. But it's people like you, David, that inspire me to keep doing exactly what I do. So would you like to start off by telling our audience exactly your story? This this program is for you. It's for you to be able to shine and get your message across that you have been desiring to do for so long. So share with everybody, David, your story and how you became and where you came from. Awesome. Thank you very much. First of all, uh, like you said, I come from Africa. I come from Uganda in East Africa. Africa is a beautiful place, has beautiful people, beautiful nature and everything. As I speak now, I've been in California for three years and definitely I miss the food back in Africa. I would love to go back and taste some of those bananas. But just going to my story, uh, my story started in 1995. 1995 was such a unique year to me and my family. I was born in 1975 to my parents. My mother had nine of us, and I was the ninth child, but we grew up seven children. And uh, my father had other women, so I can't really tell the exact number. And this is the reality. I can't exactly tell the actual number of kids, how many kids were to my father. Growing up as a young child uh, and very close to my mother, I lost my parents. Both of them died in 1995. I was a little kid. Remember, I was the last kid to my mother. My mother meant everything to me then. I mean, everything I asked for in the world, just like any other child would ask of their parents. So in July, my father died. Two and a half months later, that is September, my mother died, the same year. Now, to me, that is when my life really started. I lost hope. The world shut me off from the rest of everything. You can imagine how a little child, a little boy would be without parents. I dropped out of school. I couldn't see much. I didn't know what my next day would be like. As a matter of fact, in our community, and I always tell people, we grew up in a middle class family in, in Africa. That means we had lights at home, we had a good house, but we lost everything. As soon as my parents died, our immediate family, our immediate relatives took off everything. They left us with nothing. One thing I always tell people is that the poor people 
in our community started referring to us as poor because we had become poor. Africa does not have programs like insurance that will take care of families when your parents die. I mean, they are not there, so you can because imagine what life would be like. Now, when that happened, what could I do? Nothing, absolutely nothing. I dropped out of school. I had no hope. I had no nothing to do. One day, I was walking on the street. I mean, waking up to walk to nowhere, to speak to nobody. You're not sure of what you're going to eat, how your day is going to end. A friend of mine, who was a Christian then, told me about the Bible. I couldn't relate so much because of what had just happened to me. I mean, it was so hard for someone to show me a scripture in the Bible or to tell me how God loved me when I had just lost my parents at such a tender age. You can relate what life was like. But life went on somehow. I know a certain relative of mine who looks at me as a miracle because of what happened a little later. Now, because I didn't have so much to go to school, I had to go to church. I resorted to church. I resorted to praying. I resorted to reading the Bible. I resorted to believing God over the years. One day, while I was at church, there was a job advert of where they needed someone, a Christian boy, to go and work. That was my very first hope that I had to apply for a job that I didn't know about, that I didn't have qualifications to even apply, but I was very positive in taking a step of faith that, you know what, God is going to help me. I need to take this opportunity. I need to apply for it and go for it. That's how my life started, getting up again. Out of over 200 people, they needed one person. And that one person was me at the end of the day. I can't explain to you how. I can't explain to you what happened. But I went to a farm where nobody knew me. But I only applied and had faith and I prayed to God, believing that I would get this opportunity. Lindy, I did not even have a clue of the job that I had applied for. One of the requirements they needed is someone that could ride a motorbike. I didn't know how to ride a motorbike, but guess what? During the interview, I told the panel I knew how to ride a bike. I had to go home over one weekend, determined to learn how to ride a bike. I came back on So Monday. David, you they they told you what they needed, you didn't do it, but you you stepped up to the plate and you said, I know how to do it. And then you went home and you taught yourself? That's right. I Fantastic. looked for someone that had I looked for someone that had a bike on a Saturday afternoon mm -hmm. through Sunday because I needed to go back on a Monday morning and I had told them I knew how to ride a bike. I knew they would give me an exam on how to ride a bike and I did. Now, life went on and on. A little later I got married. I have a beautiful wife called Kathy. I have two children, Tavi, she's 12 years old. Tovil is 10 years old. These two wonderful children and my dear wife needed to know where my life started. Remember the community that referred to me as poor, that I had nothing, but I loved them so much because that's where my life had started. I always had an urge of going back home. What I did, because it was very important for me and my children to understand where I had come from, every Christmas time, I went back to the community. We served them a Christmas meal at the church. We got kids that we involved and served them uh, a Christmas meal. Now, Lindy, there's one reason why I had to do this. Remember, my parents had died. Mm -hmm. And guess what? My parents died of AIDS. Oh, now, wow. AIDS, AIDS is a very live disease in Africa and in Uganda. But 
in this thing, I was able to learn that there are very two innocent people in the scourge of AIDS. One, the children. Children are very innocent beings. Today, I mm -hmm. look at so many kids that I relate with because of what they go through. They're either going to lose a parent or they're already orphans. And they lose hope. They don't know what to do. They have nothing to look up to. I mean, it is so sad for you to look at your parent and you know they're going to die mm. of AIDS and you have nothing. So you the watch second, them starting to pass away from this horrific disease, yeah? Right, right. Wow. The second group of people is the women and mothers. Mm -hmm. In Africa, and back home in Uganda and in my community in particular, I know of women that are very loyal women mm -hmm. to their husbands. They will not say no to anything. I strongly believe if my mother knew her rights as a woman, she would be alive by now. She would have mm. taken a decision, she would have done the right thing and she would be alive today with me. I would be enjoying her hugs. I would be enjoying her meals. I would be enjoying her love. Mm -hmm. Those two kinds of people have touched my heart ever since. And as a result of my story, what I've decided to do is to create a foundation. And that foundation is the one I have named Hope for Nasenyi. Nasenyi is the community that I come from. And I'm, I'm looking at those two groups of people. Hope for Nasenye Foundation is focusing on building a school for the kids that I have been looking up to, that I've been looking after, I've been paying tuition for over time, even before I came to this country. Now, I'm getting them under one roof. Next year, we are going to start under our own roof, first grade and second grade and we're taking care of kids that are either orphans or are not able to meet any of their needs because of the situation. Number two, I'm determined to have wonderful people like Lindy come to Africa, come to Uganda, and sensitize women in my community. I would love to. Know to. your rights. To know your rights, to know what you stand for, to know that you're the most important person in your family that will take care of your children because children will always look at their mothers, especially in Africa. Yes. The fathers are there, but not really father figures. Mm -hmm. The mothers play a, an important role of a mother figure and a father figure in the family. So my foundation is really focusing on these two people. Mm -hmm. We are launching our foundation in January, January 19th, and I'm gonna invite you, Lindy, to come over to LA in California. We're going to have a wonderful Ugandan meal that we're going to serve and all the proceeds definitely are going to lead to the school that, that, that we are studying next year. Wow. And, go ahead. David, it will be my pleasure to come out to California and to help in every way I can. In every way I can. I believe in your mission. I believe in your cause. I believe in your community. And I'm there with you. I'm so glad to hear that. Thank you mm -hmm. very much, Lindy. It's extremely important that we take care of you. I mean, I do not have much. I wish I knew what I know now before. And that's why I'm trying to create hope for children. Nobody did this for me, but I relate very well onto what these children, what these innocent little children go through that they have no hope. Now, why do I start a school? This school is going to be very important to this case that it will and extremely be very helpful in exposing the kids. I wish I had the exposure that I have in that situation. It would be a different world. But who knows? I mean, God had his own plans. Right now, I'm creating hope that I didn't have, but I got along the way for these little young children. I like how you say that I am creating hope. And David, you are not trying, you are doing. And if it wasn't for your past, you wouldn't be on this journey. So right. God bless your past to make you who you are today and who you're going to be coming more and the lives that you are going to change 
just because of what you went through. You had to go through what you went through in order for you to live your purpose of what is today. So I give you applause and I give you kudos for every piece of strength that you have because nothing is easy, but you did not give up. Just like when you said, you know, I had to learn to ride a bicycle in only less than 48 hours because I needed to go back and ride the bicycle and you went ahead and I'm sure you fell many times, but then all of a sudden you started to pedal and you started to ride that bike. And when you were supposed to ride your bike, you stepped up you got on and you rode. So this is your journey. And, you know, even though may your parents rest in peace, um, it was all part of your journey. So it's a blessing. It's not, it wasn't a curse. It was absolutely a blessing for you to go and pay it forward to the community and to the children of today. You have so many children that are in South Africa or Africa, Uganda, that, are thirsty for the knowledge, thirsty for the right. education, and they are wonderful. They are fabulous. And because of you, they are going to live within their journey. You're very special, David. Thank you for the encouragement, Lindy. I, 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 I love what I'm hearing. I mean, people like you get me going. I mean, sometimes when you're putting up things, you're like, am I sure of what I'm doing? Sometimes mm-hmm. you feel like, should I give up? but you wake up in the morning and someone is looking up to you. If you let them down, you're letting so many down. That's right, that's right, yeah, that's exactly right. And don't you find that as soon as you feel like you should give up, there's a sign from the universe, there's a sign from God, whatever that spiritual being is, that all of a sudden taps you on the shoulder with some kind of a reminder to keep you moving moving forward. Do you find that's that? Right. That's right. So many times, so many times. I mean, uh, just three days ago, I, I, I was in a meeting and I was looking at so many things getting out so hard and I'm like, how can I get out of this? I mean, I'm already into it. Then when I got home, I got a, an email from a little kid who was not well, but needed their tuition paid. And I just imagine how they are looking up to me. I mean, they have no idea what meeting I was going through, what was happening earlier in the day. But I get home and this soul who is going to be a great person tomorrow is looking up to me. I said, mm-hmm. God, I can't give up. I can't give up for them because they have faith in me as well. Mm-hmm. I can and more importantly, away. you can't give up on you. You can never of give course. up on you, David. Never. Because you are you are strength. You are you're a mentor. You are, you know, everybody thinks that mentors and speakers and authors that we don't have challenges. And I'm here to share with you that we have challenges. We've just right. learned how to get through those challenges and never give up because as soon as you feel like you should give up, there's always a sign. So the email to you was a blessing for you and for that little boy. Lindy, I tell you, I'm so glad I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm so yeah. glad that I'm going to have people go to Africa. I'm so glad that I go around and tell this story to get somebody's life better. Not mm-hmm. about me anymore. It's about somebody that needs hope. Mine is already gone. Somebody wakes up in the morning and needs hope out there. Somebody right. feels they can't do it because of who they are and with the situation. It's not that you can do it. Everybody can do it. We yes. can do it. We can do it. 20 years ago, I didn't know I would be speaking to Lindy. 20 years ago, I had no hope. I knew the world had closed off me. Here I am, hundreds of kids are looking up to me. Mm -hmm. And you know, those children, what they're gonna learn from you is that it matters who is in your inner circle. It matters. It's because of Mr. Les Brown that you and I started to communicate. It is because of the inner circle of strength that we both decided that we wanted to be a part of that is opening up more doors for us to be able to inspire the world to keep on going. That's right. 
I'm so glad. I'm so glad we met. I will never forget that Sunday we spoke. I think we spoke for about two hours, and by the time we were done with the call, we had a deal. Yes. Yeah, we did. We had a two-hour consultation, you and I, and it was it was heartwarming. I could feel your heartbeat even through the phone, and more importantly, I knew that you were a man that wasn't going to quit. That's the kind of people that are in my inner circle, those that are not going to quit, and you're not a quitter. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Lindy. Thank you very much for this opportunity to speak to so many of your friends and my friends across the world and anybody and everybody that is going to listen to this broadcast today. I am so glad. Please come, let's give somebody hope. Amen. Let's partner and give somebody hope. I mean, just, Amen. just, just visit our website. Just go to our Facebook page. Our website is right there, www.nasenyi.org. And the website is there. Wonderful That's wonderful. That and you know, this show has the ability to be syndicated anywhere around the world. All right. we need to do is get in touch with that community television studio or platform that's in those areas and let them know they need to syndicate the Happiness Jungle TV show that's out of Nashua, right. New Hampshire. And then boom, there you are performing in front of all of these people that need to hear your words, David. They need to hear your words. I am ready to go anywhere around the world to tell my story and to raise hope for these little children. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to go anywhere. I'm right well, here. I'll tell you, David, I'm a big fan it. of yours. I'm watching you. I'm watching you on FaceTime. I'm watching you go and speak at different communities. And I'm watching the audience literally sit up when they came in slouching. So your work right. is absolutely effective. It's absolutely yeah. effective. I don't want you to ever stop. Thank you very much, Lindy. I will not stop speaking to you. I'll not stop uh, consulting you. You're so very kind. You're so very helpful to me. I'm so glad we met. I am too. And I'm thrilled to death that I, I literally um, have this TV show. I'm blessed. Uh, so you could be on it. Like I said, reach out to all those different communities and make sure that they know about this show and tell them it's a must. It's a must that you have it syndicated right. because my words are powerful and I want everybody to hear what I had to say. And there's only one way to do that because you're only one person and there's only 24 hours in a day. And that is making sure that on one platform you're heard universally. Thank you very much. I'll definitely do that. I appreciate your help. Thank you so much. Yeah. And, you know, when you talk about your wife and your children, I could hear the love. And what I mean by that is that you broke the chain of the way your father lived his life. You broke that chain. You right. have one wife. You are faithful to that one wife and you are faithful to your two children. Your children know who their brother and their sister are instead of wondering how many brothers and sisters do I have? So again, breaking the chain of the things that weren't serving you is another very powerful part of you. That's extremely important, Lindy, extremely important. And that's what I want women to go and sensitize the women back in my community in Uganda about. I mean, you'll hear men say, you can never say never. But it's a choice. It's a choice that one can live by. A choice to make a decision. I made a choice. And I don't believe in people that say never say never. I said never. I can never have any other children out of my home, out of my wedlock. It's a mm -hmm. choice. And very mm -hmm. easy and simple to live with. I look at them. I love them so much. I love my wife so much. They are part of me. They are part of my story. You know, I remember one of the of things vision. that you did when we met, and you were working at an assisted living, right? That's right. 
Yeah. And you were you were helping our elderly loved ones make sure that they were okay. It wasn't the place that you took 100% desired to be, but it filled the void because you were willing just to do whatever it took to get you to where you need to be. And I want to thank you for that. I want to applaud you for recognizing that you need just to go where the where you're led to be. But nothing is permanent. Everything is just another stepping stone in life. And if there's one thing about you, David, that I've learned over the year or the a few years now that I know you, is that you take every stone to heart. You grow from every stone and you are building your mountain. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I didn't know you would catch that. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I appreciate I mean, I love people so much. Yes, you do. I love people because I love myself. Mm -hmm. Because of my own story, I value people. Yes. It's extremely to value. If you don't value yourself, then you can't value people. If you don't value people, then you can't value people. That is so true. So believe it or not, David, we're coming to a closing. And I want you to give the words of wisdom. You're here today. So let's go from today. Give them the words of wisdom on what you feel in your heart that has created you to start building your mountain and not just letting your stones go to a pebble. Life is very unique and we live once. Extremely important to always remember. Now, I've always told people that you can lose anything, you can lose everything but never lose hope. Mm -hmm. Hope is all we need every single day we wake up in the morning. If you can give someone hope on the street every morning you wake up, please do it. Yeah. And hope has to go with action. You can That's hope right. and you can pray all you want. But you have to take action. And that's what this show is all about. Helping our audience realize that, yes, you should hope. Yes, you should pray. Yes, you should desire. But it is up to you, just like it was up to David to get on that bicycle. It is up to you to take the actions so you could ride into your tomorrow with glory and shine and look back at your past, not as a bad part of your life, but as the learning educational part of your life. Thank you very much, Lindy. I will remember that as well. Thank you so much. I will never, ever forget you. I will always remember you. I cherish you. Thank you so much. Oh, I appreciate you. Now show everybody that beautiful smile of yours because we never close the happiness jungle without smiling and really wow. sending out those absolutely positive, fabulous vibes. And let's say goodbye to everybody. I love David. you all. <laughs> I love you all. Thank you very much. Thank you for being part of this today. Have a great day. Amen. Bye-bye, David. Goodbye, everybody. Bye -bye. Ride your bicycles. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.